Okay, welcome to our first meeting of the spring semester, GSMO meeting number six of the year. Um, today is going to be a talk on facilities. We have two really great guests tonight, Cami Stinser of the O'Connell Center here in Gainesville, Florida, and Kevin Stark of the New York Giants. Uh, just to get started, they're going to quickly just introduce themselves and then we'll get into some of the questions. Um, hold on. I. Okay, um, so we're just gonna have the guests, if they can quickly introduce themselves, how they got to their organization and um, what their role entails now. So either of you can get started. Um, I'll go ahead and, and start. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Cami Stencer. I'm currently Assistant Director for Athletics at the O'Connell Center on the University of Florida campus. So for most of you, I'm, I'm guessing you've been to the facility and hopefully been to many of our events. Um, on my path to getting there, I started out as a part-time employee at the O'Connell Center. Um, I just needed a part-time job, and I did not know exactly what I was going to do once I graduated, but I loved working the events. I loved being in the facility. I worked probably too much when I was a student and eventually ended up going to grad school um, for sport management, realizing that this is what I wanted to do. Um, basically just from the firsthand experience of working at the O'Connell Center. And for those of you who aren't aware, we do have a a student training program that allows our student staff to take on a lot of responsibility that they wouldn't have otherwise in a, in a typical part-time job. So through that experience is really how I, I got my first event and facility, experienced my groundwork in the industry. Um, after I graduated, I worked for a private company managing their trade shows. So I worked on the client side of things and I would um, make sure that our trade shows and national events happened smoothly. So I had a lot of travel. I was um, in and out of all different convention centers. So I did get to see the side of events where you are coming into a different facility for every different event. And it does help me get a an appreciation for what our clients see when they're coming into the building and what some of their expectations may be. So that was a, a really valuable experience for me. Um, but when the O'Connell Center had a full-time opening, I was very quick to jump on that opportunity. And I joined as a senior event coordinator at the O'Connell Center about seven and a half years ago and have spent those years gaining more experience and working my way up to my, my current position. And as assistant director for athletics, one of my main roles is serving as liaison between our, um, our facility and the University Athletic Association, because we are two separate entities. And while they are a very frequent client for us, they are not the only one. Um, so we have to work very closely with them to make sure that we're able to put on the athletic events that we are really known for. So I work very closely with them and serve as the primary contact for men's basketball, gymnastics, and swim and dive events, as well as, you know, nurturing that relationship and maintaining our tenants because we do have two tenant teams um, we have swim and dive and gymnastics that train in our facility. So I work with them on that as well. And um, of course, I work on events outside of athletics, but I will say that athletic events are my primary focus. And I'm excited to be talking to you all uh, this evening. Thanks for having me. I'll take it from there. Um... Guys, my name is Kevin Stark. I'm currently the manager of facility operations at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Uh, for those that don't know, it's the home of the New York Giants, the New York Jets, and the XFL Guardians. And then when they come back, we'll be home to them as well. Um, I guess to say how I got into this role, uh, to kind of follow Cam, you were saying, I, got, I started off in the industry as an intern 
uh, at MetLife Stadium. I was finishing up grad school. I uh, wasn't really 100% sure what I wanted to do, but I, I did love events. I loved working with people. Um, and then I kind of got lucky, found the posting for an internship online, uh, applied for it, uh, got it. I was in that position for about three months. Um, and in that role, I was kind of doing surveys. I was walking around suites, uh, just kind of seeing what dancers were, were happening around the stadium. Obviously, uh, we have 82,000 fans that come in for a game that things are going to break, things are going to get damaged. So it's kind of routinely going around checking everything. So uh, in that role, that's what I was doing, kind of taking surveys and stuff like that. Uh, and then a full-time position opened up. It was the shipping and receiving coordinator position. Uh, wasn't really thrilled about it at first. I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to go that route. Um, Cause to be honest with you, it's a, it's a glorified mailman for the stadium. Um, you are working with the events or handling their logistics and stuff that are coming in uh, event wise, but you're also kind of handling everything that comes in for the stadium. Um, but I did apply for that position and I, I ended up with that position as well. Um, and that was a really good learning experience. It's kind of, you start at the bottom and you really learn your way. You work with so many different departments and so many different people. Uh, and you kind of, again, learn from the bottom up. Um, and through this process, I kind of had a, a mentor that I would talk to and, and kind of get advice from him on what I should do with my career, what I'm looking to do. Uh, and relatively quick in that position, I was like, hey, you know, I'm looking for more, I'm looking for more. But, you know, he kind of said, sit tight, relax, um, learn as much as you can, uh, be a sponge. So I, I listened to that advice. I, I was there for about two years. Uh, and then, he, you know, after speaking with him, he's like, okay, it's time. Let's look for, you know, a different role. Uh, and then kind of like Cammy, I went the trade show route, uh, the New York Javits Center in New York. Uh, it's one of the largest convention centers, um, constantly busy, has a 95% occupancy rate, which means there's always someone moving in, loading out, a show open. Um, and in that role, I was an event manager. Uh, there's six of us. So you kind of get appointed a show and you become the lead for the building. You help the show organizer plan their show at the facility. Uh, you guys got to think about it that these people know nothing about your building. Um, they could be repeating clients that do, but you'll get new clients that have no idea. Where do I get power? Who do I talk to for this or that? And uh, as a building representative, you become that voice. Uh, so I was in that role for about a year and a half. Um, had no plans of leaving. I was, I was really happy. I really enjoyed it. It was constantly busy, always on the run, trying to problem solve. Um, and then about a year ago, actually, to this date, maybe a little more, uh, MetLife Stadium called back uh, about a, an opportunity that was opening with some shifts kind of happening at the upper management level. Uh, and I listened. I was like, you're crazy if you're not, if you don't. Um, and it kind of, it fell into place. Um, I got really lucky just before this pandemic hit. Uh, I accepted the position to go back to MetLife. Uh, thank God we had the NFL season uh, and, and we had some events that were happening. So I was able to, to learn, but in a very unique way, uh, doing some things virtually is very unique. Um, I'm sure Cammy and all you guys like being at the facility and being hands-on and talking to people face-to-face. -face. So this is a, a very strange time for all of us, but um, that's kind of my backstory. Um, I'm excited to, to talk to all you guys and to just share some stories. Thank you guys for those great introductions. Uh, moving into our next question. Um, how should students prepare for a career in facilities and event management? I think there's gonna be a lot of different paths to that career, but I would say the best way for you to prepare is if you have the opportunity to intern or work in events, um, take those opportunities to, first of all, see if you like it. See if you like being on your feet for a very long time. Um, if you can get through those days without burnout, because some people really feed on it and love being busy and love that you're going from one event to another, but other people can really get burnt out. And it's, I really, when we have interns that come in, I really encourage them to like, to dive in head first and find out now if they like it, um, because it, it isn't for everyone, um, but the people who love it really love it. So I would just say, if you see those opportunities, take them and really test yourself, because if you, 
if you go into this halfway with events and facilities, you're, you're not going to be successful. Um, and I really try to just encourage people to try to know themselves um, in this, in this role before going too far. <laughs> yeah, to, to piggyback off Cammie, um, you, in this profession, you're going to lose your weekends. So I think that's a very important thing to know. Uh, I've had friends that are in this profession and it does get to you after a while. Um, you got to think about it. You're sacrificing your time so other people can have time together. So you're, you're help creating an event in this atmosphere uh, for families, for friends and colleagues, what, you know, whatever it be, to come together to watch a basketball game, a football game. Uh, you're sacrificing your time to make that happen. Um, so, you know, in my position, you know, the summer times for us, it's, you don't have a summer. Uh, that's our concert season. Uh, we're full go. We're one of the probably busiest stadiums uh, packed full of concerts. So, you know, being up north, your vacation time is winter months. So <laughs> I guess that's when I got to plan to head down to Florida. But um, I, I think that's an important thing to know. And you will learn that by taking on an, an internship or volunteering. Uh, this is a field that I, I to go back to my internship and, and Cami starting, you know, at the bottom, that's where you have to start. It, it takes patience too. Um, you're not going to just jump into this field and expect to be at the top. Uh, venues take time to learn. Uh, sports management takes time to learn. Um, you're going to learn some ins and outs from all different people around you. So um, I said it before, but you got to kind of like be like a sponge. So when you're in, in that internship role, um, that's what you should, should try to absorb and, and see if it's a fit for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, starting uh, kind of like Cami, I started, I've been starting at the bottom of the O'Connor Center and it's crazy how much you learn in just a few months, let alone, and then how much you, you learn by the time you're, you're there for years. Like it, it just keeps growing on each other and you become that expert. And I feel like that's, that's what I've known that is super important. And like facility management is that like, the more you know about your building, the better the, the clients will be happy and the more the events will go smoothly. So that's just my two cents. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you have the opportunity to, to, drop, to try working in different departments or areas in the facility, not only do you have the opportunity to see what you like, but then you become more valuable in whatever role you're in. So if you've spent some time working on the technical side, you'll be able to help answer at least basic questions when you're talking to clients and just provide, you just become more valuable and that makes people wanna hire you. Yeah, and kind of like to talk about the Javits Center real quick. Um, I know people that were bouncing from security and then they would go do guest services and then they would become an event manager. Um, you know, you could work in different departments and you learn that and they could gear you towards a next step. Um, knowing, trying to have an idea of what each department does and how they handle situations, it's only beneficial. Yeah, I mean, the teamwork alone at the O'Connor Center, I can, I can tell. I mean, the, the admin are constantly bouncing off ideas because no one idea is the best. Um, so yeah, for sure. I think that being knowledgeable in, as much and knowing where you're, where you're lacking and using people around you is just essential for this industry. And probably the smaller the venue you're at, the more you'll have to do. So, you know, when you're at... A, a venue that only has, you know, maybe half a dozen <laughs> full-time staff, you're going to be called on to do a lot of different things. And the larger the venue, probably the more specialized you're going to be able to be. And, and that's really where, you know, maybe you, you get to the expert level, but I can say just, you know, being at a small to medium-sized venue, we really do have to know a lot more be more well-rounded because our you know technical department is two people so if they're not available somebody has to answer the question um so that's that's just something to kind of expect depending on the the size of the venue you're you're working at or looking towards and to save like event wise so sometimes like the smaller the event the more of a headache it was it was kind of the more of the hand holding that was needed um it's funny that you say smaller venue it's it's kind of like the same thing Definitely. Okay. Uh, so next question. Um, what are some hard and soft skills you think students should begin to develop um, when applying to these different roles within the space? 
I think the hard skills, you know, if you're going to try to learn like budgeting and finance and kind of having that background, that definitely helps. Um, I do think it's a profession where you, you learn a lot just in the field. Um, you see it. It definitely helps to visualize it. Um, I mean, when I took on my first role, I didn't really understand budgeting. It, it kind of happened uh, through management. I learned from them. I would sit with them and kind of go over it. Um, so I do think the finance background definitely helps. Um, soft skills wise, I think it's huge. Uh, you need just to kind of know how to work with people. Um, when you have a client, you don't know what kind of day they had. Uh, you just want to try to help them as much as possible and try to help their show happen and, and be as flawless as possible, uh, which is never happens, but you, you shoot for it. <laughs> um, but I think as long as you can have people skills and, and, and problem solve and don't become flustered, you know, things are going to happen. Um, so in this field, I think having the soft skills is, is better. Um, I do think the hard skills will come as you start to learn and again, be hands-on. I, I definitely agree. I mean, customer service is the number one thing. I mean, you have to be able to um, calm people down, de-escalate a, a situation. Um, there, if people do not like working with you, it's going to be very difficult to bring in events. And we are all trying as hard as we can to do that right now. Um, also being able to be comfortable speaking to various groups of people, sometimes larger groups, um, you, you know, you do benefit from being able to speak to a crowd. There might be times where you're engaging a lot of employees at once and some people can get flustered and, and think of that as a public speaking situation. And you're going to have to do that sometimes on a daily basis. So if you have opportunities to get more comfortable in public speaking situations, I would recommend that. In terms of hard skills, I agree that a lot of that comes on the job. But if you have opportunities to learn about, and this is very specific, but if you have opportunities to learn about ADA regulations, EHNS information, fire codes, and, and this is going to be different depending on the type of venue and your location. But those are the type of hard skills that you, you really just have to learn um, to operate safely and effectively. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, Cammie, we've been, we've had our, our, our share of uh, those safety meetings. And I mean, you gotta be, you gotta have someone who's the expert for a venue to operate successfully for sure. Okay. Um, what are some challenges that you you guys face on a daily basis within this job? And if there's a story that you guys could tell uh, that kind of uh, expands upon why it's such a challenge sometimes. Uh, I'd say, I mean, every event poses a challenge. If you want to say a day-to-day -day challenge, I mean, I know every venue is different and states are different uh, when it comes to, to labor and, and unions. Uh, but definitely dealing with the unions in the Northeast can, can be quite a challenge. Um, you know, going from MetLife in New Jersey and then going to New York City was a much different uh, a challenge. It was electricians, plumbers, HVAC, um, carpenters, and we had show carpenters. So you kind of needed to know the fine line. And the challenge in that is, you know, most of the people you're working with uh, are older than you in that field. So you kind of are working or managing up in a way, and you're trying to just have a conversation what needs to get done, uh, not necessarily how to do it. Um, Cause there could be <laughs> quite a bit of pushback on that. Um, I, I don't really have any stories on that. It just is kind of a learning thing. Um, it just dealing with the different trades and the different unions and, and just being personable with them. I'm not trying to re reinvent the wheel. I mean, you've been here longer than I have, you know, here's our challenge. Uh, here's what needs to get done and, and how can we do it? I can definitely say that was something I learned when I was working in the trade show, like going to different um, convention centers and working trade shows. I had not worked with unions um, <laughs> prior to that. And yes, I very quickly learned how different uh, state to state they could be and, and how that could be uh, very challenging. Um, I would say, and again, I mentioned this before, but I mean, one challenge that I definitely 
experience myself, but I also worry a lot about with our staff is burnout. Um, especially when we're in a peak season, like right now um, at our facility, we have so many events going on and we don't really tend to have a, a slow buildup and a slow wind down. We just go from very slow to full speed in our athletic seasons. And I worry about our staff, you know, overworking themselves and becoming frustrated or unsafe. And, you know, you have to coach people on, on knowing their limits while also re respecting your own limits. And so that is something that I'm always working on and trying to improve. And I think that is one of the hardest things to really master um, in the division, in, in the industry, especially when you're talking about coaching up your staff and getting them to the point where they can work a lot, but still work safely and not want, you know, and, and not be miserable. We want them to have a good time. Um, that's, that's a challenge that I face a lot. Gotcha. Um, so moving on, um, how has your role changed this season, especially with COVID the COVID-19 pandemic? I think you wear a lot more hats. Um, you know, in, in our, at the stadium, we were limiting how our staff on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that kind of put me back in the mailroom a little bit. You know, I was down there kind of helping out where I can uh, just different projects that maybe necessarily weren't my, was my task to do, but again, you kind of just stepped in and helped uh, wherever you can. Um, I think that's the, the biggest thing. And then there's the unique elements of, uh, I know you guys, I believe had fans. I mean, we didn't have fans, but you know, we still had to create a safe environment for staff to come into the stadium. Um, and that's just signage all over the place. Uh, plexiglass, which is all over the place as well. Um, that was one of the unique challenges this year was kind of like stepping into many different roles and then uh, kind of having to adapt to the CDC guidelines, the NFL protocols, um, and following what they were putting out there um, for us to do for, for game day. Yeah, it's definitely been an interesting year. Um, even harder, even more challenging than some of the SEC guidelines have been some of the ESPN guidelines. They have been extremely strict, um, and that has been a real challenge in terms of working with uh, camera operators and camera placement and finding safe place, places for people to shoot the, the events from. Um, so that's always been that's been interesting this season, um, but just flexibility in general has been really crucial because I'm sure you all have seen that, you know, games change or go away, um, get rescheduled and it happens unexpectedly sometimes. And so we're, we're rolling with the punches and we're changing all the time, but we're also trying to be really creative in terms of how we're we're dealing with these problems and how we're getting people in safely and creatively trying to think of events that we can do safely and you know we are in a unique situation here at the university because there are some events that the university is just not willing to risk and so a lot you know we're typically in the habit of scheduling our events and making those decisions internally, but that has been taken out of our hands in certain instances. And so now we have this challenge of working within the university's limitations and trying to explain to folks at very high levels in the university, you know, why we feel confident in our, our skills and our abilities to host events. Um, and really trying to give our expertise to those decision makers so that we can continue to have events. Um, that has definitely been a, a new challenge. That's, um, that's something that I think is going to probably stay for a while and we'll have to continue working with them. Um, and all we can really do in those situations is rely on our experience and, and communicate up what we can do to make these successful okay. events without okay something negatively uh, reflecting on the university. 
yeah i mean it, it, it makes total sense i mean there's so much logistical work now it, it totally like as the the word of the year is unprecedented like you never knew who you were going to be talking to about all these different things and how to do it safely we're all i feel like especially in this this space um we're in the space of building like events for large groups of people and that's not allowed so it's like how do we still operate still create revenue but still uh have successful events in a safe way and i think that these challenges are like super real and we never thought they would even have them okay so moving on um what how is the how has networking impacted your career and if you could tell us some kind of anecdote about how networking has uh shaped who you are now as a a industry professional Could you could you repeat that, Josh? You were kind of breaking up a little bit. Oh yeah, sure. Um, just it was how has networking impacted your career, and how and if you could share an anecdote of how it at some point shaped a certain part of like who you are now. Well, I would say I mean every every major position I've had in in my life I've found that position from somebody letting me, you know, pushing me towards it. Um, somebody letting me know, hey, there's an opening here you would be appropriate for, or, you know, I think you should apply for this. So, you know, having those either mentors or former coworkers or former bosses who think highly of you and are willing to push you in those directions, that has been, um, crucial. And I mean, the reality is in my role now, a lot of times I'm in a position because I do work with so many students where I can try and help them get either new opportunities or networking opportunities. And I really try the best I can to, to share those opportunities. Um, I personally, when I was a student, spent as much time as I could in um, involved in IAVM and um, attended multiple conferences and used those as opportunities to meet people outside of the O'Connell Center and outside of UF. Um, I would highly recommend um, if somebody's interested in events, looking for different conference conferences, there's lots of scholarship opportunities. There's local Florida um, FLMA, if you wanted to participate in that, there's always scholarships. And a lot of times they, they go unused until we find out about them. And then we like push them on our students so that they can go. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to talk to people you wouldn't have talked to otherwise. Um, at one of the first conferences I went to, I interned and I was a trade show intern. And I actually was talking to the, um, the industry partners for IAVM and helping them book their trade show space for the next year, which actually really helped me get an idea about um, trade show layouts and trade show positioning. Um, that really helped me when I ended up working in trade shows. And I had no idea that that would, that would be the direction I was going because I was focused on athletics. Um, but it, it was like my first step into trade shows. Um, so I, I couldn't recommend something like that more highly. Yeah, I think, you know, with some hard work and networking, it, it kind of really got me to where I am today. Um, you know, I didn't find out about venue management until I met someone through my dad and, and I had dinner with him and he's kind of explaining MetLife Stadium. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a really cool profession. Um, and then, you know, some time went by uh, an op that internship opened up at MetLife. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to put his name down as a reference. And he was cool with it. And and that's what I did. And I think it carried some weight. Um, and then through that time, uh, that was the individual that I was kind of asking, like, I'm ready to kind of learn more. I'm ready to do more. Um, then I expressed that, hey, there's, a, there's an opportunity to open up at Javits. Do you know anyone at Javits Center? Um, he didn't know someone specifically, but he knew one of the general contractors that does quite a bit of work at the Javits Center. He's like, this guy's there all the time. Here's his number. Give him a call. Uh, I call him. 
have a great conversation. He explains the Javits Center to me. And, and right before I was about to hang up, I said, do you mind being a reference for me? Could you reach out to so-and-so on my behalf saying that we spoke, you know, I'm highly interested. Uh, and he did. And, and when I met my soon to be boss at Javits Center, he, he gave me a lot of credit for doing that because it's just taking the step, uh, networking, reaching out to other individuals um, and putting yourself out there. Uh, as Cami mentioned, IAVM is, is a great source. And I learned about IAVM uh, while I was at MetLife. Uh, Brad Main, who's the, the president of IAVM, was then the CEO of MetLife Stadium. So being in the mailroom, I used to see all this stuff for IAVM come in. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. I'd like to be a part of that someday. Um, and here I am. I'm a representative for New York with uh, IAVM. Uh, through the trade show world, uh, I got connected with IAEE, International Association of Exhibits and Events. Uh, I'm on the board of their New York chapter. Uh, and it's just a great way to, to stay, on, stay in contact with people uh, and to, con to continuously learn. Um, through IAVM, you can get a CVP, uh, which is a great tool to kind of learn more about venues. And, and you see everything. You see the marketing, you see the finance, you see the security element of it. And then through IAEE, there's the CEM, which kind of helps you learn floor plan design, budgeting for trade shows, marketing. Um, it really is beneficial for you as a venue manager because now you understand why the client's doing what they're doing. Um, it just gives you more perspective. Um, you know, I definitely, on the venue side, it definitely helps, but it's good to see in the lens of, uh, of the client um, on how they are, why they want to do things. Um, and then again, it's just as professionals in the industry, those two are just great uh, resources to stay connected and to, again, continuously learn. Thank you guys for those. I mean, I think that networking is huge and that we, we, we kind of harp on in every single meeting. It's a question we always ask our guests is because with each industry, networking may seem a little different, but in, in reality, it's the same. No matter where you want to go within sports, like you got to know it, it becomes a smaller industry once you get in is what I've heard um, time and time again. So like, it's just making that first step and being uncomfortable to, uh, to, to meet those connections and build up your network because you never know where like that personal referral will come and cut, come in handy when you're like applying to those jobs that you really want. And you never know, but it's, it's never, but one thing I do like to harp on is that like, you never want to have those connections where you're just asking for something. You want to be able to have those, those, times where you're just catching up with an individual and it's not always a one-sided asking for things so like I think with networking it's it's a balance but there's so many cool ways like you were saying with IAVM and IAEE like uh, those are great like like platforms to network but it's on you to actually make those first steps and make those introductions for yourself sometimes but okay so moving on um, what is something that you guys wish you knew coming out of college uh, to work in this profession? Um, I think this kind of can go back to what we we're originally talking about of it's a nonstop industry. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really know that at first when I got into this. I'm like, oh, cool, we're gonna do concerts, we're gonna do football games. You know, you just think of the event as it, as itself you don't think of the, the potentially week long or the long nights to, to help that event happen and all this work that goes into the back end of it. Um, if that's not for you, you're gonna learn real quick. It might not be the, the industry for you. Um, but you know, for some people, and Cammy may feel the same way, uh, you could get an adrenaline rush from it. So that's probably one of the biggest benefits of it. And um, it's definitely really exciting, but I think that's one thing I, I wish I learned at first. and. Uh, Again, I mentioned to be patient and, and to learn and to, to be that sponge and take in everything that you can and um, progress up the ladder um, as time goes on and as knowledge is gained. I definitely agree with that. Um, the, the other thing I would say is that venue jobs are, are, are hard to come by. Um, a lot of times you're not going to find the job you're looking for in the location you're looking for right away. So, you know, you have to either be willing to go somewhere else, look outside of, you know, your dream market or 
look for a different role in the facility or, you know, I mean, honestly, I wanted to go into facilities right away, but I, I wasn't able to. So I got experience elsewhere. Um, and I think that's something that is really true for, for venues. A lot of times people will, will find a place that they love and stay there for a very long time. So turnover is low. Um, and so you have to be willing to try different things or different places. Um, that's kind of the, the harsh truth of it. Yeah, I was actually gonna, I was actually gonna be my next question. You kind of already answered it, Cami. I was like, what, what is, my question was gonna be, what, what is it like to especially move up in this industry? Like, uh, does it take moving to different cities? Um, does it like, so, I mean, if Kevin, you want to speak a little bit to that? Yeah, you could stay at that one facility for, for time and, and see if positions open up or some people retire. It, it, it could take some time. Or the other route you can go is you bounce, you bounce around a little bit. Um, I mean, I think I'm a little fortunate being in New York area. Uh, we do have quite a bit of venues here, uh, but they're all different sizes, scales, and, and different type of events. Um, but that kind of could put you back. It's, it's now you're learning again. You're creating a new environment. Um, the, the bounce path is tough, uh, but if you do want to move up a little bit quicker, it could come that way. Um, but Cammy's 100% right. It, it, there's not that many opportunities out there in this field, and, and you may take a position that maybe wasn't the most ideal or be in a location that's not the most ideal, but um, it comes in time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, the next question I have is, um, I know it's such a hands-on like side of sports but are there still things that you could be doing on the back end reading things watching different things like is there something that you did it, especially early on in your career that kind of um, put you ahead even though it is such that hands-on industry was there stuff that you were doing on the back end that really helped you guys well I mean there's so many different things you can do um, and there's a lot of resources through some of the industry organizations but I will say, and this is pretty niche, but one thing that I, I really like to read is um, Polestar does a, a weekly and a monthly magazine and they'll have lead, legal updates in that magazine. And it's a good way to see um, what's going on in the industry and what potentially could go wrong. Um, learning from other people, mis other venues mistakes before they happen to yours or just having you know, an idea of, you know, other venues are having trouble with a specific tour or a specific promoter. Um, I, I always just found those very interesting and um, informative. So it's just kind of a, a niche place to look. Yeah, I, I, kind of going back to IAVM, uh, I do read their news articles that come out and they touch on different topics. Uh, I think really during COVID-19, we kind of learned uh, from each other, venue to venue. So we actually get on a call with some of the venues that are in the area and we're just discussing, you know, what issues are you having? Um, how are you dealing with broadcasts? How are you dealing with this? So uh, reading is definitely great. Um, it's also just reaching out to other people that are in the field and just asking the questions. Um, I remember when I was in that, that shipping receiving role, I would go up to the project manager and be like, hey, what are you guys doing with this? How'd you do this? And you kind of just pick their brains. Um, just kind of learn a little bit from from that. Great. And then just as a final question, if you had one piece of advice, whether it be in the interview or finding that role, if you could give one final last piece of advice to the people watching this call, what would it be? Uh, Josh, you kind of mentioned this. You know, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You have to kind of reach out to to different individuals, again, you know, this is a profession that it is tough to get your foot in the door. So don't be afraid to make that phone call. Don't be afraid to shoot that text or to reach out to someone. Um, you don't know what that contact is going to gain you. Um, it is what you know, but it does help who you know. Uh, it's gonna be honest. And I, I think you just, you can't be afraid. You definitely have to take that step and uh, just reach out to, to you know, whoever. I would say um, that you really need to be honest with yourself and with your uh, potential coworkers or bosses when you're in an interview situation or in a, a potential new job situation. 
I, you know, I don't want somebody who's going to answer the way that I want them to answer, because if it's not true for them, it's, it's not going to be the right fit. And in this industry, you are spending a lot of time with these people. <laughs> You're spending, you know, very long days, nights, weekends. If you don't like the people you work with, if it's not the right fit with you, if you're forcing yourself into a mold that doesn't feel right, you are going to be unhappy. <laughs> um, and so when, when they're asking you in an interview situation, are you comfortable with this? Are you willing to do this? How do you feel about this? Answer honestly and, and answer honestly to yourself. Um, otherwise, you know, it'll become real evident. It'll become evident real quickly um, that it's not the right fit. Great. So that does it for all of my questions. If anyone wants to go off mute quickly, since we have an extra few minutes, um, go ahead right now. Um, these are two great industry professionals. So definitely take advantage of the time. Um, hi, nice to meet you guys. I, I was just wondering um, why event management and why not any other aspect or, or field in, in um, sports management? And why did you um, actually decide to choose event management? Uh, I think, you know, being in event management, you get to deal with so much, um, you know, in, in, in our roles, we get to deal with the concerts, the soccer games, the football games, you know, you get to, you get to really broaden yourself um, and to deal with so much. Um, I didn't even think about looking to work for the Giants or the Jets. That wasn't even a route I, I knew of. <laughs> um, so I kind of just jumped into to MetLife Stadium and, and I fell in love with it. Um, and then from being there, I learned to, you know, to get a, a position within those organizations. That's, that's tough too. It's kind of like the, the venue route, you know, there's only X amount of teams out there and X amount of positions. So uh, I do think venue management gives us a little, uh, a broader scope and, uh, you know, you can kind of jump from venue to venue and, and still have, uh, the same knowledge and experience. I, I agree with that. It, it really is the variety of the role, um, events are so different from each other. The people you work with can be very diverse and that keeps it exciting. Um, again, I, I just like seeing the result of the event. You know, I like when people are, you know, screaming at the top of their lungs at a basketball game. I like when people, you know, experience a concert for the first time, that's rewarding for me. Um, so I, I don't know where else I could really find that exact experience. And I will also say this is very unique to the O'Connell Center, but I love working with the students. Um, it's, it's not that common to have the type of training and interaction that we have with students and really feel like you're helping somebody improve their, their job skills, their professional skills on a regular basis. It's very rewarding. Um, so that's why I've really enjoyed working where I am. Do we have any other questions? Hi, yes, I also have a question. Uh, my question is more targeted for um, Kevin Stark. Hi, <laughs> so at MetLife Stadium, my question is, do you work alongside the team of New York Giants and New York Jets, or do you focus on different aspects of the events? Um, technically I, I work for them. <laughs> no, no, you work for the Giants, not for MetLife Stadium? No, I, I do. So the, the MetLife Stadium is a joint venture between the New York Giants and the New York Jets. So they both own a, I guess, an aspect of the stadium. Um, so when it comes to it, whatever the teams ask for, you know, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that happens for them. Um, you know, an, an interesting, uh, with COVID, the Giants had their training camp. Uh, at MetLife Stadium, which was a brand new experience for all of us. Um, and we're turning clubs into meeting rooms. We're putting a weight room on the plaza that's outside the gate. And, you know, in our roles, we're doing whatever we can to make them as comfortable as possible. You know, it is their facility too, along with the Jets. Um, when it comes to events, we will work with the clients to give them what we can and uh, provide them with the hospitality service. We're trying to, to like, make their event go again as, as smooth as possible. Um, so I guess I could say if the Jets employer or Giants employee came in and asked me to do something, I'm gonna 
to try and make that happen for them. Thank you so much. I didn't realize that they're all um, like unison. Mm -hmm. Well, if that does it, um, I know, okay, yeah, if that does it. Um, thank you guys for coming out tonight. I think the people on this call and the people that will be watching this meeting afterwards um, will be super appreciative. You guys gave um, like amazing advice. Um, we appreciate the time. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.